you excited to be here at my show? Hope you all enjoy it and have fun. Greetings fellow Descendants, my name is Lars, and today I want to talk to you about the brand new Descendant that just dropped, Luna. So Luna's the mad artist, she focuses primarily on music, uh, she's sporting a Lucio-like handgun, and if you're a big fan of Guitar Hero, DDR, and stuff like that, uh, you might like playing this minigame-like character, but we'll uh, get into that when we talk more about her. Let's go over her skills. Let's talk about her passive, improvisation. So Luna has a secondary bar a resource bar, but it's not the same sort of resource bar that other characters have. It builds up just kind of passively or whatnot. Uh, this this bar is built up purely by utilizing your skills by switching from song to song um, or by utilizing the ultimate to build up the uh, inspiration. When your inspiration gauge gets maxed out, you get to utilize uh, one of your skills as an enhanced version of the skill, giving you extra buffs and extra power to, to it. If you fail um, if you fail on notes while you're building inspiration, it goes down. If you succeed, it goes up. And this is just for the purpose of, like, switching songs to build inspiration. Um, so, yeah, and if you are out of combat for too long, inspiration will go away. So make sure to build it up and use it properly. So, how does she play out? When you use her first ability, Stage Presence, you equip a unique weapon, her little pulse rifle thing. It takes on the properties of your equipped weapon in terms of your max ammo capacity. If you've been increasing your ammo rounds in your gun, uh, when you use it, it'll actually have more. Uh, other than that, it doesn't take on much of anything else from the weapon. It's purely based on skill power, not on your firearm attack or crit rate or anything, so... Purely your skill power will make this damage go up. Um, when you hit the note successfully, whether you are on this beat or on another, you will gain perfect pitch stacks. You gain skill power modifier increase by 1% for each stack with a max of 25 stacks. And you get bullet recovery when you switch to a different song. So when you switch to a different song, you'll recover 10 times your shots in bullets to be able to utilize more stuff. That is the basis of her entire kit is this sort of mini game where you shoot your uh, shoot the notes as they come through in order to activate your other songs your other abilities you have to activate your ability timed with the note uh timed with one of the one of the notes so in order to actually make your way through the different songs you have to time it with the notes as shown here so what are the other abilities so exciting act is your skill power modifier song this will give skill power increase to both you and your teammates. And when it is enhanced, it'll grant you even more skill power increase and skill critical hit damage and rate increase for your teammates. This is a flat buff. This is not this is not taking into account your own innate base crit modifier. This flat adds 50% skill critical hit damage and 35% skill critical hit rate. As shown here, my friend Teddy went ahead and uh, sat with me and tested this. Prior to me turning on this buff, he had 6% uh, crit going with his uh, little bit of additional uh, crit mods on. When the buff was active, he went up to 55%. The flat amount added, Valby is who he was using. Valby only has a base crit skill crit of five the additional 1.6 percent just came from the mods itself the five plus 35 gave it a 40 percent base and then the mo and then the mods amplified that to make it 55 and he wasn't even running that many mods as shown here he was barely running any mods they weren't leveled up much at all this is a crazy buff this buff is insane if you are running skill power based characters uh with your friends or just with your groups luna is going to make them insane even even valby a character that has no base crit can be amplified by this to actually do a ton of crit based stuff so uh just th keep that in mind this buff is crazy this probably is gonna I don't know, this might get nerfed i don't know but it's pretty nuts uh up next we have the relaxing act 
which gives MP recovery to yourself. And then when you, if you amplify it, if you go enhanced, it re provides MP recovery to your team at an increased rate. Otherwise, you just get base MP recovery for you and your team. You are likely never going to amplify this. The um, exciting act is too strong. Uh, there is almost no reason to ever enhance the relaxing act because all it does is provide MP recovery. Even if you needed the MP recovery, you could just toggle between this and exciting act for a bit and just get some pretty base MP recovery for your team. And that would be enough. This is a good skill. Uh, you probably will not ever use the en enhanced version because uh, exciting act is just too good. And finally, the ultimate cheerful act. When you are in the cheerful act, you gain cheerful performance. Inspiration gauge increases on each successful note hit that hits an enemy. So when you are in this mode, every note you hit that then shoots at an enemy and hits them will increase your inspiration gauge by one. This is how you quickly and easily build up your inspiration so that you can go right into one of your buffs. Um, but... If you do manage to actually get yourself built up enough to use your inspiration on Cheerful Act, Cheerful Act actually has a cooldown decrease of 100% that gets applied. So you might be confused as to why that says two different sets of cooldowns here. Well, cooldown decrease 100%, that's what is applied to all currently, all skills currently on cooldown. So if your teammates just used one of their biggest skills, like their ultimate, you can pop this, give them minus 100% on the cooldown on it, basically resetting it, and then when they use it again, it'll have a minus 40.9% cooldown decrease on it. So it'll have, it'll only have to go through 60% of its cooldown instead of the full total. This is also an insane buff but it requires that you dance between your exciting act and your relaxing act for a long time to build up enough um, inspiration to really use this. So you're never gonna start a fight with this. More than likely you start a fight by utilizing this to give yourself the fast exciting act enhancement. Then you're gonna toggle between exciting and relaxing until you have enough for another buff. And then you can utilize cheerful act buff in conjunction with your teammates to go ult, reset, ult, big, big slosh of damage just all at once. This is a crazy, crazy skill. This is a crazy, crazy character. If you are running with ability-based people, this shit is insane. Massive cooldown opportunities, massive skill crit increases. Luna is nuts. Just absolutely insane. The trade-off is that Luna does not do much damage on her own. Luna's damage is entirely, like her whole playstyle is through the uh, the gun here. Activating the skills, utilizing each aspect of it, building up your inspiration. You're just going to be passively shooting, and it's not really going to get you much anywhere in terms of damage. And you can't even utilize your your normal gun in this state. But the trade-off is that she doesn't do a lot of damage on her own, but the buffs she provides are so insanely strong that it's well worth it. As you can see here, when I have a weapon equipped that does not have any additional um, ammo charges to it, there's no mods in this gun at all. I only have 32 as opposed to my 50 something bullets in the gun when I'm running my Thunder Cage, which has uh, expanded max general rounds, expanded weapon charge, rounds for magazine, rounds for magazine increase by uh, 79%. It's time yeah, 56 end. instead of the 32. It is definitely a good idea to do that so you can start with a lot. So make sure you have a weapon equipped that has that going on so that you can have a lot of extra starter bullets. Um, let's go over what kind of mods you can utilize with Luna that can really amplify um, her effects. First, we'll start with damage, since I know probably a lot of people think, okay, well, you know, we're not doing a lot of damage generally. How can we add more damage? Well, 
Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, how much damage we were doing um, at base. Let's go. So 1880, 18. We're building up a little bit of damage through the stacks. So that's going to creep up even more. But we're starting with a base of 1800. I've set this training dummy to be a level 100, so it's got the added defense going on, added stat lines of what something of a more higher level would be. So it caps out at 20, about 20,000, 21,000. But it started off at about 18. So the the gun is a non-attribute and a tech weapon. The, the songs are each singular types, though. So I'm going to go ahead and test. I'm going to go ahead and showcase what it happens when you have a non-attribute. There it is. A non-attribute specialist. So 81.2% increase. So let's see how much damage we get out of this now. So 30,000 now as a base. Just by equipping that. So 18 to 30,000. Just for this one alone. I'm going to put this away now. We're going to go ahead and try this with the... Specifically with tech now. When you utilize Exciting Act, you will be doing slightly more damage because of the skill power increase that that provides as well. So we're going to equip tech. So tech alone does... 26,000. So 26,000 for tech, 30,000 for uh, for non-attribute, with 18,000 as a base for not having anything. Oops. So now I'm going to go ahead and do it with tech and non-attribute. And we're at about 42,000 as a base. So if you want to improve the damage output, you can do tech and non-attribute boosts. That will make these stronger. And when you go into your exciting act, you will do even more damage because of the boost. Um, all in all, this isn't a ton of damage. Uh, but there isn't really much else you can do. Uh, there isn't really much else you can do. Luna's buffs do not affect her, only her teammates, her allies. So you can't really even buff your own skill crit enough to try and make use of it. Um, I'll show you real you quick. Ready? Skill crit is still 15% with skill crit hit damage at 1.2. And all my, all the buffs just went away. So yeah, there's no buff to ourselves for that, so we don't actually get the benefit. So there's no reason to try to build for crit, really. I mean, you 15% is okay. You could if you want to, but the rate at which you're shooting with this gun is not enough to where I think you want to try to build much damage. Instead, I think we should focus... Less on the damage. If you want to do any damage, though, these two um, mods will get you some damage. Non-attribute and tech specialist. Just boosting those values will get you more damage. Um, but I think it's best utilized with uh, maximum range increase. So skill expansion will make it so that your buff areas are bigger. And... Um, you can also use maximum range. The skill power modifier will reduce your damage, but it will give you reliable range until you can get your hands on one of her transcendent mods, which I, w I can't showcase really because it requires allies, uh, requires multiple allies, but I can show you what it does. So I'll go ahead and get it up here. So nimble footsteps is one of her transcendent mods. Um, granting buffs to allies increases Linda's movement speed and skill range. So if you have this mod equipped, you can see here, Nimble Footsteps, when 
you uh, buff two allies. You require it requires two stacks to get active to be activated. So once you've buffed two allies, you can then gain stacks by buffing allies. Each stack lasts for ten seconds. You can max out the stacks at twenty. You get movement speed boost per stack at 1% and skill range boost ratio per stack at 10%. So if you max this out, you have 20, you have 200% boost to the radius. All of these are 250% max expandable range. So between nimble footsteps fully maxed out and one normal skill expansion, you will absolutely cover your, your, your radius. Until you get Nimble Footsteps, you can just use any um, skill effect range boosting that uh, you come across, like uh, Maximize Range. Uh, even with the loss of power, being able to buff your teammates more reliably is better for Luna. So whatever you need to do to get that range up, do that. That's the best way to go about it. Cooldown only works on the on-note failure, not the on-note success. So you can't speed up your own inspiration stack buffing by making the on note success cooldown lower you only affect the on note failure and if you're failing if you're trying to compensate the failure with with a mod it's probably not going to do you much good it's better just to practice the luna um, shots it, the beats are not too ooh, hard they're pretty simple and straightforward and they don't go too fast once you get used to them it's not that bad so definitely avoid cooldown. It does nothing for for her. Um, skill extension increases duration. If you do duration increase, it makes it so that the stacks last longer for your uh, your vivis stacks last longer for your nimble footsteps. Your uh, duration of your buffs lasts longer. So if your allies are running out of your um, AOE buffs circle. Um, the buff will linger longer on them, so duration is not bad. Duration is actually probably the secondary thing that we want to equip, so that way that if allies are just running around, if they move out of our uh, AoEs, uh, if they move out of our buff circles, or if the buff circles expire, the buffs will still trail for an additional amount of time. So 6.8 seconds, we can probably add more. I've got another... Um, So duration up to 59%. We can get it up, up from 5 seconds to 8 seconds. That's not bad. Um, ultimately, though, the important thing is your radius. Uh, that's the most important aspect of it. If you want to purely just be a buff machine and you don't care about power, getting stuff like maximize duration and maximize range built up, you're going to lose some power, but you're going to buff more reliably, more consistently. Enemies, or I'm sorry, allies will not run out of your buffs for very long because the range will be so large. And if they do, their buffs will linger long enough to where you can catch up to them or they can realize that they've walked out of your thing. Um, it's all pretty good. Um, aside from that, I usually utilize um, uh, HP mods, increased HP and HP amplification gives you a lot of extra HP. So now I'm rocking 18,000 HP. That's pretty good. The other good mods you can do if you want to amplify your damage more, um, Passionate Sponsor. If you're going to go for a more, um, if you're going to try and amplify your damage a little bit more so that you are still contributing while you're doing stuff, um, Passionate Sponsor does work. When you buff an ally, you gain Fire and Attack and Skill Power Modifier. Um, plus 0.75% each time for up to 10 seconds, up to 10 stacks. So that is pretty good. Uh, you're going to get the skill power modifier advantage, not necessarily the firearm attack, but it's, it's pretty good. It's a pretty decent boost. So combo that with your non-attribute specialist and your tech specialist. Um, your damage output will go up a little bit more for sure. Uh, I did attempt to test out multi-talented because we have the uh, singular for all the songs, and then we have the tech for the the active. Um, it doesn't do enough, honestly, because you're basically just cycling 
between singulars over and over again. And all attribute damage plus 8% for 5 seconds. Um, when you level that up, it's nice. I think you get more value from passionate sponsor. I think that would be a much more valuable um, architect than multi-talented. Uh, if the songs were... If each of these acts were a different type, so you could utilize all facets of multi-talented as needed, it might be better. But since you're primarily just going to be bouncing between singulars and just boosting damage, uh, I think you get more damage out of the passionate sponsor overall if you wanted to focus on more damage. But that is entirely up to you. You don't really have an MP problem, so you don't need MP collector. You can do skill effect range from amplification control. Both exciting act and relaxing act do have scaling off of max MP. Um, I tried to build some max MP and ultimately only got about 100 more MP than the base 300 that she has at level 40. I don't think it's worth building more. I think you just take the 300 base that you've got and just roll with it. Um... It's better to just go ahead and build yourself up with defensive stats such as HP and uh, your defense. Just get those really high. Build your expansion and your extension, like your duration and your um, your range increases. So that way you can cover a wider area with your buffs and your buffs trail on longer when your allies leave your buff circle or when your songs end. And Nimble Footsteps as a Transcendent mod is really good. There is another Transcendent mod that is in the game. I did not have a chance to get it, but it does convert all of Luna's abilities to damage abilities. So that would be where you'd get more use out of doing more damage-oriented uh, build. But I think for the most part, it just is a lot of AoE effects that would most likely be better utilized just for doing like clears, like dungeon clear type stuff, and not so much for doing... Uh, anything against big bosses. I mean, sure, you probably can get a lot, a little, but I can't say for sure, but I think it's more so just for AoE stuff than it is for just raw just power output. But Luna as a base and with Nimble Footsteps is so beneficial to bossing with regards to helping skill-based teammates do so much more damage. But if your teammates are mostly focusing on guns instead of skills, then Luna is not an ideal teammate for them. Enzo would be better suited for that scenario as a better as a better teammate for a gun focused uh, group. But if your group is focused around skills, Luna is a valuable addition. So much extra damage from the exciting act buff. That flat crit rate and damage buff is insane. This character goes crazy. That's really all for the mods. So this is pretty much this is Luna. She gets in there, adds a lot of value through her buffs. In fact, she's going to probably make certain character setups extremely strong because of the fact that even characters that do not have high base crit will have opportunities to go for crit builds if you play with Luna, which can be incredibly insane. And even those who are already on high crit builds can get even more consistent, even higher damage numbers because of the added flat crit damage buff That'll amplify with the mods even more, producing more and more damage. One Luna plus a couple ultimate Lepix built for the big damage. That could be in that could be maybe even a faster clear than what's already like super fast clear, you know. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, try it out yourself. If Luna seems interesting to you, start farming up her pieces, and uh, yeah, get out there and have fun with her. She's a really cool character. Uh, I had fun playing her. If you don't like the rhythm game sort of feel of her kit and how she plays, that's perfectly fine. Um, I think it's okay, though. It's slow enough. It doesn't really take a lot to kind of get it going. And mistakes aren't that detrimental overall. So I don't think it's a, I don't think it's the most worrisome thing. And uh, getting built up to enough stacks utilizing your ultimate and then popping off with your exciting act buff is pretty quick and easy to do. So... I think if anyone's worried about Luna being too hard to play, I don't think that that's an issue. I think that she's fine. And I think anyone could pick up this character and provide a lot of value to a group as long as your group is built for um, skill-based uh, damage. And uh, yeah, she's going to be pretty good. I definitely think when Mega Dungeons come around, every group's going to want to at least have one Luna or one Enzo in it. Um, 
depending on the group makeup, start farming up Luna now, get out there and start giving people insane crit buffs. But uh, yeah, that'll be it for this video. I am going to do, I'm going to do another, I'm going to do more character uh, descendant uh, guide videos. Going forward, this is just a first impression of the new character. Um, by no means is this a fully fleshed out aspect of what she can do. I'm sure somebody will come up with more to her, but I went through most of the base stuff I could figure out on the first day here regarding all of her stuff and uh, how her skills truly function. And somebody, if you get it, if you get it and you can let me know what it, what's going on, let me know in the comments what the, the full damage, um, sort of transcendent mod does for, because I'd be like, I've seen what it does, but I, I want to know more like number wise, kind of what it does, but I'll try and get that and get that rolling at some point. But, uh, yeah. So be on the lookout for more guide videos in the future. If you enjoyed this uh, video and you enjoyed this content, uh, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe. Thank you all for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.